Okay, uh, Mr. Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To all of our witnesses, uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Sheriff, how, you were mentioning to us in your earlier testimony uh, about gotaways. Can you tell us how do you know uh, how many folks got away? What vehicle do you use to observe or, or, or measure gotaways? Uh, Congressman, yes. We use two methods here in Cochise County and the state of Arizona. Currently, we have a virtual camera system that runs the whole state of Arizona and parts of New Mexico that's monitored 24-7 through my office. We use our statistical data uh, and compare that with our Border Patrol partners to ensure that we have accurate numbers on gotaways. Gotaways are defined as people that are seen on cameras that are never apprehended. The other aspect on the CBP side, one of the tools they use is the aerostats, uh, commonly known as a blimp. Um, I was told this year that out of the 13 blimps, they were coming down at the end of this fiscal year, which is next month. The, um, there's only four left, from my understanding, one being here in Cochise County. That The sophistication of camera equipment on those uh, aerostats is one of the main ways of counting the gotaways. Now, I can surmise and say the fact that when those four come down, what are we going to be using on the federal side to count gotaways? I predict those numbers will go down drastically. I've asked in D.C., I asked what the replacement of those aerostats would be, and they said they haven't developed the technology for that yet. So. And so what is your understanding would be the reason in taking those aerostats down? Well, one thing I continue to say and continue to hear, and sadly I have to say it, is the fact that the numbers are an illusion. I call them non-political numbers if they're reported accurately, but number two is it's a shell game. It's a shell game, it's a word game to make the American feel, people feel safe when we know here at the community level, especially here in Cochise County, that that's, not the, that's, that's a false narrative. I would also say this, and uh, in my travels, uh, part of National Sheriff's as Border Chair, I deal with all the way up to the Chief of Border Patrol and many others. I have yet to have one tell me that the border is secure, those who wear a badge from the federal government. Sheriff, have you met with President Biden and discussed your concerns? We have attempted on behalf of national sheriffs, western sheriffs, major county sheriffs, and southwest border sheriffs. I was told during a recent summit here in Cochise County and beyond, as sheriffs came together to find reasonable and um, balanced methods to secure our border, secure our communities who we represent, I was told that President Biden is the first president in history um, that we has never met with one of America's sheriffs. And so, to your knowledge, President Biden's not met with any sheriff in America to talk about border security. Uh, I just got back from another uh, meeting in Florida with sheriffs, and to the best of my knowledge, he still has not met with uh, any sheriff in America. Has anyone in the administration given you any encouragement or told you that they were behind the, uh, the sheriffs in, in America to partner with dealing with this crisis? To answer that question, Congressman, the answer is no. I will caveat that with this. Uh, on the onset, uh, myself and about a dozen selected sheriffs that are very engaged from the urban areas to rural areas to the southwest border to the interior met with Secretary Mayorkas. Uh, I actually personally hand carried him a 16-point collective plan to secure our border that was put together by sheriffs around the country to include my border committee at national level. Uh, three months later, I had heard nothing. Approximately three months later, I asked him where that plan was. He had a chance to review it to see if we can have some collective thinking or compromise. He asked me what plan did I give him. So that's the last I've heard on that. What can Congress do to help you and the other sheriffs address this border crisis? I would ask all Congress members to, uh, first of all, set aside the politics. This is not a political issue. This is a public safety, national security, and humanitarian issue. I've said this, and I need to, I'll say it again. Once we set the politics aside and look at the political reality, or excuse me, the, the, um, the, the, the community reality of what's going on, we need to prioritize and identify the issue of our border, all our borders. We need to share a message, local, state, and federal, on what the border means and what we need to do with it, we need to, which is enforce the rule of law based on actionable consequences. We need enhanced judicial oversight on our border which if you put that in comparison, if I took all the judges out of Cochise County, when we arrest them, have to see them the next day, the, uh, the judges see our incarceration folks, and there's no judge, they're automatically dismissed and released. And that's what's happening on our border, and uh, together we can move forward. But until the politics is removed, 
and people get their head out of the sand, we, we could uh, we, we got to get that done before we can move forward. Sheriff, do you think that uh, this is a political stunt in, in what you see today? Do you, do you see this committee behaving in a political way? I've had the opportunity, obviously, uh, uh, Congressman Biggs and Cisco Monte, I've worked with uh, being our own congressman from Arizona, but the other three I have not met with you until today. I, I will say this. Uh, I applaud you all for coming here because you show the respect toward our community and you made it actionable by being here and listening to us, not just me, but others and people in the community with the round table with some folks this morning. I don't think this is political. People, will, people like to use that word because it's cheap, but the reality is I applaud you all for being here and just listening to what we have to say. And the people in the room that are here supporting, thank them too. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield.